Hello, Pod Smashes of the Internet, and welcome to another episode of Hello, Pod Smash, where gaming goes to grab a beer. If I can open we it. are your hosts, Penguin and Termite. I'm Penguin. I am Termite, and we are a weekly video game podcast, smashing together ideas that you care about with video games. That's right, and tonight we are celebrating Thanksgiving, which is happening like this week. Isn't that crazy? Like, not oh, yeah. the week we're recording, right? It but might the week well this be. airs. It might as well be, yeah. And I like, I completely forgot. I took the whole week off, so I'm like, I get through this week, and then I have a whole week off, and I'm like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> I had forgotten about that. that There's so cool. much going on. There's so many like dates that I have in my head. Like, I'm going to my friend Nate's house for a bro down at the beginning of December. I'm running certain D and D games at certain times in yeah. early December, and so all of my mind has been towards the dates coming. Yep. after Chris or after the holiday that have nothing to do with time off. And now I'm like, oh, wait, but I have time off. <laughs> That's so nice. So anyways, tonight we are going to be talking about gratitude and and it's our series, new series called Press F for Feelings. Yeah. And so we're going to be following that. So we had talked about we did like our first Thanksgiving episode. We talked about like things we're thankful for. This is talking about thankfulness or gratitude as an emotion and whether or not video games actually like do a good job of representing or eliciting that emotion uh and so it's gonna be more about gratitude in game design pretty much yep not being thankful for games or not the games that we're thankful for or anything like we've done no thankfulness something different as a game mechanic yeah cool so we'll get into all that and more but first we are where gaming goes to grab a beer it's the fact that you're drinking tonight. I, don't I know have why I your, your beer. It's thanks. Because I already told you. <laughs> I know. I want it so bad. I'm so mad. This is a variation of Victory's Golden Monkey called Merry Monkey. And I knew this existed like on a beer menu somewhere once. And I've never seen it in stores ever until I was at a Total Wine in Richmond, actually. Nice. And I had a cases up, stacked up. So I grabbed mm-hmm. one. And it's a Belgian style ale with cranberry, orange peel, cinnamon, and nutmeg. This Belgian-style mm, holiday ale ah. combines the beloved flavor profile of Golden Monkey with notes of cranberry, orange peel, cinnamon, and nutmeg to deliver a delightfully smooth finish, perfect for merry gatherings with family and friends. It does not say on the bottle podcasters, but I'm going to add that. So <laughs> that's, that's good. I wish it did, though. That would be fun. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that is delicious. That's I good. I want to try it so that's bad. Really does it taste like what? So is it mm. is it like... Like really roasty, uh, roastier than normal. Like because I know that the sour monkey tastes like it does say like it's like a sour, but otherwise it's like mm-hmm. a, I mean like a Belgian. So it's yeah, this is totally a Belgian beer. There's no doubt. Okay, like cool. absolutely, it's got that that like same style as a wheat beer. Blue Moon, obviously Golden Monkey has that. This this is that. There's just hints of the cranberry, a lot of orange peel, a lot of orange peel in there. Uh, cinnamon, nutmeg are not as pronounced. So it's mm-hmm. a Belgian style orange peel ale. Nice, nice. Got it. I wa- I want one. That's all. It's yummy. So if you were here, you could have one. So see you in two hours <laughs> or an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I can drive four hour round trip just to just to get a merry monkey. Just to I need get to a find merry monkey. Yeah, I need to find like a um, place that has it around here. So I'm drinking though a Virginia Beer Company's evil santa yeah and uh let me see good. yeah it is good it's very good i was very they changed the label this it. year i like and it it makes me it, it doesn't have anything on the label but it, it, i was excited because i was like yay now it's stout season like it just turned cold here in virginia like uh, like immediately right like saturday it was i was outside 70. with my kid and i was sweating and then yep. sunday i was like bundling up and freezing cold like that's i mean it went from like summer I wouldn't say summer. I would say like mid spring kind of weather to winter, like overnight. It was yeah. crazy. Kind it of was cool. very windy in between. Mm-hmm. So anyways, but yes, now that it's cold outside and I'm bundling up, it's a uh, perfect time for a stout. And this is like picture perfect, picturesque. Look at that. Stout. Yep. It's a milk stout. Uh, and it has, let's see, what is it? I will at least read it. Cinnamon, nutmeg, and allspice, which is, yeah. oh my gosh, pumpkin pie, like right there like just blast you in the face but it doesn't taste like pumpkin pie because there's not any pumpkin in it it just tastes like mm-hmm. a stout that is very christmasy so i love it yeah have you had a gingerbread stout this year yet from hardywood Mm-mm. the famous christmas not in yet bottle. but this basically is like yeah. almost almost exactly the same kind of thing except it's a milk stout instead of yep. um you know like an imperial or whatever so anyways yeah that's what we're drinking so um i kind of want to just jump into jump into favorite things is that cool with you 
Or do you, you want to talk? Don't want to talk about nominees? Oh, for game of the year? do the. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Do that. Just and the we'll one talk category. About the... There's like 31 right. categories. It's a big deal, but yeah, the game game of the year award nominees for 2022 have uh, been announced, mm-hmm. and we're gonna be live streaming watch along if you will whatever you want to call it on twitch.tv slash 80 bit pod smash the game awards is december 8th 7 30 p.m eastern so be sure to start liking following us on twitch now so that you'll get notified when we go live or jump into our discord server which i'll get to more details about that but the game of the year category always 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 draws a lot of conversation and it's a big deal and they were uh, announced today so I'm going to bring up the nominees right here as I want to view the categories for just game of the year. There's 31 other categories. We're not going to go into all of them, but here they are. There's six, mm-hmm. six games, a plague tale, Requiem, Elden Ring, God of War, Ragnarok, Horizon, Forbidden West, Stray, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Those are your six game of the year nominations. What are your nice. thoughts? I talked to you a little bit about this. I, I, I I'm still convinced it's going to be God of War or Elden Ring stray would be the only one i could foresee you know xenoblade chronicle 3 was a surprise to me yeah stray it's not a surprise everything else was not a surprise but i've never i haven't played xenoblade chronicles 3 i haven't played any of xenoblade chronicles so i have no idea how they stack up but i'm glad that nintendo has representation though so there's that the switch has a game on that list other than that uh yeah i i i I think that stray would maybe be the one that's closest just because of how innovative and different that game was I haven't gotten a chance to play it, but that was my understanding. And just how kind of like beloved it was for what it was. Mm-hmm. Other than that, though, like I just really can't see anyone topping. And and if it does win, I'm going to I'm still probably going to cry shenanigans because it just seems like they're going out of their way at that point. Right. Like it takes two was kind of an upset and it's a great game. Don't get me wrong, but it seemed like it was selected simply because of how different it was versus yeah. like other games that were that were still like that it, probably deserved it more that year 2021 Anyways, was this- also kind of a light year uh all six mm-hmm. of its nominations none of them were the big heavy hitters like elden ring god of war horizon forbidden west are three big massive like obvious shoe wins for game of the year so it's going to be competitive but last year 2021 was Resident Evil village it takes two psychonauts two metroid dread ratchet and clank and death loop all kind of like Good, obviously, they wouldn't have made Game of the Year, but I think that's why It Takes Two kind of eked out that win that was a surprise to everyone because the competition wasn't as heavy as it is this year. And I completely forgot that a Plague Tale Requiem was a thing. Like, when it first came out, people were playing it and talking about it. There was a lot of buzz, so it was there. But when I saw it on the nominee list, I was like, oh, yeah, Plague Tale Requiem. Like, mm-hmm. that's... Yeah. Yep, I haven't played either one of those, but I assume it's pretty good. I was also surprised that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 was on here. I expected the Nintendo category to go to Pokemon Legends Arceus Mm -hmm. as it was doing entirely new innovative things with Pokemon that had never been done before. And uh, I guess I expected that. So I would have expected that or Bayonetta, but yeah, or yeah, Bayonetta 3. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, neither one of those are there. So that's our list. We'll see what happens Mm -hmm. come Game Awards. My prediction is God of War is going to win. I thought you said today, you told me today you predicted. Elden Ring was going to win. No, El- uh, I predict God of War will win Game of the. I never gave you my prediction for Game of the Year. I, 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 I differentiated the, uh, the the two uh, in our conversation. You because said, I said oh, that Elden voted Ring for did- Elden Ring for Game Direction. Oh, right. I thought Game you Direction is a different category. Saying. Yeah, Hold what I did now. say. Oh, I I did say Elden Ring could win because the jury of over a hundred different video games, mm-hmm. journalists, media representation goes like that's who's picking game of the year and so i think elden ring got a lot of buzz around when it first launched and it was was hot heavy heavy talked about forever and it was reported on all the major game websites for weeks and weeks and weeks god of war it came out and it's kind of quiet now like people are more scared of spoilers than anything else where elden ring it was how can the community work together and engage with everyone so there's a lot more conversation so i think if elden ring wins that's why but you said as, you said you predicted that game that Elden Ring will win for all of that, and I? this was in in reference to Game of the Year. Yeah, sorry, not to be yeah. nitpicky there, but you did you. I think you want God of War to win. I think you voted for God of War to win, but uh, yeah, I, I, I did. Uh, your your, your yeah. own words betray you. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. So yeah, I, it doesn't really matter. I think that I think that whoever wins is going to win, right? I, I and mm-hmm. this is really more of pattern recognition than anything, right? Like it has nothing That's to true. do with because obviously we have no say other than our vote, but which is only what ten percent counts for ten yeah, percent of the final talent. Internet entirely 
total tallied only makes up 10 percent of the major vote yeah it could make a difference this year and and it if it makes a difference uh the elden ring fan base is pretty voracious so yeah so we'll see though i i think i, I think that it'll be uh i think it'll be close between those two still but that's what i'm saying is like a a, 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 a 11th hour upset like stray I don't like it wouldn't surprise me but it would disappoint me only yeah. because like then it would be clear that they're just trying to like for lack of a better term they're you let know. the little guys win underdogs yeah or more of that they're like they're trying to show how like it, it just comes across it, it would come across as pretentious to me right like they're trying to show how like oh yeah look we're we're voting for the most artsy pick right then it just becomes mm. you know uh right. there are terms Hipster. for it that are inappropriate there are yeah I, that's closest but it, there are terms for it that are inappropriate <laughs> for uh and my faith in a the family friendly podcast be, exactly yeah. so well, there you go all right cool. in here. well that's that's that yeah so all right. Well, that uh, game game awards is always an exciting time because things will be announced and stuff, uh, and they uh, tend to be one of our favorite things. But eighty bit pot smashes our favorite thing. Eighty bit pot smashes our favorite thing. Favorite, favorite things. Things. A little segment, segment of our, of our show. show. Yeah. Go ahead. You go. You Why don't do you it. tell us about it? No, I'll do oh. it. Okay. <laughs> it's a segment <laughs> of our show where we talk about something that we're excited about, something that we are that gave us joy or provoked our thoughts or otherwise entertained us and that we hope that we will share with you in hopes that you are inspired to go out and find your next favorite thing. So what's your favorite thing tonight? I finished my ninth marathon and I have nice. to, I have to clarify something. I it's the ninth time that I have run a full 26.2. A lot of people that I said that to thought that I had finished in ninth place. No, 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 mm-hmm. not even close. No, no way. Uh, I yeah. finished in like 876th place or something <laughs> way back there. But I finished the ninth marathon of my life in Richmond on Saturday. And the execution of the race and everything about that, the whole day afterward, meeting up with friend of the show, Gordon, this is going to hurt podcast, toughness groove, throw out all of his brands mm-hmm. and capitalize, I believe is his newest and biggest organization at the moment but you can find him if you google those those keywords ran not with him during the whole race but we ran the race at the same time and we met up afterward we went to legends brewing got burgers and beers and fries and it was a wonderful time the race itself was really really hard it was super hot unexpectedly warm as we talked about earlier in the show it was 78 degrees by the end of the day or at the hottest point mm-hmm. of the day but the uh marathons you want you want those 40 degree temperatures when you run in for three hours plus and uh so one of I think it was my second slowest marathon of my life. So I I but I wanted to get back in the game. I hadn't ran a marathon for three years. I had a child, second kid. You know, Alex, my wife had we had two mm-hmm. kids. Then the pandemic, a whole pandemic happened where all races got closed and canceled. We moved. I suffered a hamstring injury, not in that order. So it's been a while. So um, mm-hmm. I'm back in the game again. I can run. It's awesome. So that's it's my favorite thing. Like I've completed nice. another marathon. What about you? My favorite thing is. Oh man, I ran a really good. I feel like I I ran a really good D and D session this last uh, weekend, and uh, we're close to the end of my campaign. And the previous session I ran last month, back in October, I felt like I kind of messed it up. And so this one, I I feel like I got my mojo back. I feel like I was able to smooth out some of the the rougher edges, and and it seemed like people were engaged and interested in having fun. You kind of get a different energy, right? Like the one in October, I felt like people were like check out a lot or just weren't participating or there was that sort of like intangible frustration but the one i ran this time like didn't i didn't feel that at all i didn't feel like anyone was like <laughs> mad at me for lack of a better term nice so that was good yeah so I, I i was i was i was happy with that so i cannot speak super highly of this campaign but i'm proud of what i've made of it if that makes sense so yeah. i'm looking forward to running either something of my own creation or just in general a better written campaign so the part two of this campaign though does seem to be it's um tyranny of the dragons for those who are D nerds out there and and part two uh rise of tiamat is supposed to be a lot better written so I, i'd be interested to see if i like how it feels to run something better but i was already looking at it and planning to make like super deep changes to it anyway so we'll see so anyways all that's just to say yeah i was i was proud of, of what i did so i've got like two sessions left i think one chapter but i think i'm gonna have to split it up across two mostly because i the final fight i want to leave for the beginning of the last session so that way i'm not rushing like the boss battle right like the thing that you're here for so i feel like that's a that that i had come to that conclusion on my own and then found out that that was already a pretty w- common 
like piece of advice for these kinds of way campaigns. to be validated uh, yeah no it was great so yeah so yeah that's my that's my plan and um sweet yeah so i like it cool all fun. right Is this i never got frustrated or mad at you i'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> you haven't played enough to get frustrated and that's true yeah <laughs> it's only been like three sessions though yeah, yeah. three or four uh-huh all right well I guess that leads us to our final segment before the main topic, which is DLC. DLC stands for downloadable content is a segment of our show where we share, like we do a, um, a little conversation that's supposed to prime the pump intellectually. And it's supposed to be more fun and lighthearted than our main topic. Or sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes it's the serious question for a very lighthearted yeah, right? topic, but that's yeah. usually more rare. Anyways, I like to say it's a conversation you wouldn't normally have about video games. Uh, a little gimmicky bit. Gimmicky bits are fun gimmicky to play with. Bits. And we're doing those now on TikTok, but we'll talk about that later. We'll TikTok we about that later. Ha! Hey. <laughs> All right. DLC for the week is what is a. Oh, let's, just, let's keep it simple. And in the spirit of Thanksgiving, what is a game, a single game that you are thankful for? Like you are grateful that this game was made and is in your life and because it had a meaningful impact to you or it changed your perspective or it inspired you to to try something you had never done before, open up your mind to a whole, whole different type of game, whatever. Like, you know, uh, we're, we're grateful for all all you know all not all games but like we're grateful for video gaming in general we talk a lot about that just for what it means to us but like what's a single game that you could say you're grateful Ooh, it's a tough question because a, a list yeah like yeah. a list of games so well, i can the, go like one, shallow or off of I can, list. Oh, yeah. but it's not like i don't want people to misconstrue that it's like my favorite experience from the whole year no 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 no, no, no. they won't not. just say I'm grateful for this game because of yeah. Blank. So no, you're I'm not saying really, it's my favorite game of all time, <laughs> right? That's, yeah, I, yeah, good, good. I'm right. really grateful for Horizon Forbidden West, and okay. this is why. There was a message in that game. I don't think this will be too spoilery, where Aloy confronts various cultures from different tribes. She's going into the West, which is a whole new world of stuff. And she's from the East, and so she encounters folks who have what could be perceived as conspiratorial ways of life or like wonky belief systems or like they're just wrong. Like these are mm-hmm. big robots. She knows the whole thing that happened in the first game. And so like she knows what these robots actually are, but the people like worship and they're spiritualizing these big animals that are just machines that are created by an AI. Mm-hmm. And I love, and I'm grateful for the game showing the main character Aloy in a compassionate light that honors that person's view, even though it's objectively mistaken, instead of coming in with like a knowledge hammer and saying, you guys are crazy. Stop spiritualizing this stuff. And like realizing mm-hmm. the value. Yeah. That I, the spirituality I noticed that as well. Relationship yeah. was like mm-hmm. to their culture and to their people and to how they were treating each other and their way of life. And I think we need that more now in our world ever, like more than ever, uh, just respecting and honoring other people's wishes, especially when it comes to spiritual things and relating to the world, the earth and the environment and like animals or like God or whatever spiritual relationship to each other we have. Like, I feel like we need a lot more of being able to do that. So I'm really thankful that horizon forbidden West had that kind of dialogue. And I have a shaping almost equally magnitude gratefulness for god of war ragnarok which i'm not going to go into at all because that's too fresh and there's way too Mm -hmm. much going on but not that at all it's a totally different topic but i'm just as grateful for a different topic in god of war along the same lines i'm gonna say yeah i'm gonna say rhyme just because i just didn't it was it was a gut punch and it was like really meaningful and it's just sort of like you know the more it settles in the more I, i wouldn't say it's my it's it's even breached my my favorite games list but just like how different that game was and and what it was the message it was trying to send. And and like, I think it was made with like a really tiny team. So like good on them. And just, yeah, like I think it's a really profound and meaningful experience. And and like kind of the more I think about it, the more I get out of it. So I'm, I'm just thankful that, you know, again, it like beat the crap out of me when I first when I first finished it. But like, you know, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, I'm glad I'm glad it did because it really made me kind of take a perspective on like, parenting and just sort of like treasuring the time that i have with my kids Mm. because you know not even that they're gonna no not even in the sense that they're gonna die which would be terrible if it happened but even just the sense that like they're not who they are 
like they're sort of the like as your kids grow up, you kind of grieve the person that they no longer are because as they change, you know, again, you know, they say that you're a different person every seven years or so. Like well, literally all this all the cells in your body are literally yeah. different. Like you have replaced, you know, yep. the, the old chip of Theseus. If you take the, you know, or I like to say the broom of Theseus, cause it's simpler. If you take a broom and you replace the handle, but it's still got the same bristles, then you could say it's the same broom. But then if you go and replace the, the, the bristles, is it, is it a broom? Is it the same broom anymore? Right? Like, so if right. all the cells in your body are replaced, like are after seven person? years, are you the same person? But like that even happens, you know, intellectually, emotionally, you know, with the with the kids, like your your son Sam is is no longer like that. What the three year old version of Sam is gone, right? Yeah. So there's like a grieving process. You kind of some people don't go through, right? Some the un- unhealthy attachments I, yeah. that parents have. They'll they always just see their kid as because they never like grieved. <laughs> so like, how do you grieve a child, right? Like even just uh, even if it's not a matter of like a, the big serious like the child died, but just like yeah, it's a it's a very interesting. It was just and all that rhyme deals come with up. that. It doesn't deal with that directly. It deals with grief and uh, it, it, it on some level that deals with like the loss. Wow. Of I got to play this game. It's good. It's really good. Yeah. It deals with with loss and, and loss of family. And but it's like it does it on a really like subtle level. And that's uh yeah, it made me think a lot of my like my kids and how to. Or or and and also got me thinking about too like how how do I prepare my children to grieve my passing? So yeah, it's very very deep game, very heavy, but very good. So I'm thankful for it to get me mortality like it's a awesome. game, right? Can do that, right? Like our parents yeah, were like, awesome. stop wasting your time with this garbage, and it's like, yeah, it's not garbage oh, yeah, anymore, huh? Yeah, <laughs> so, that's why we're here, uh, so we can speak right, into a exactly. microphone about this amazing attribute of video games. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. All right, well, we are, uh, that leads us into our main topic then. So we're talking about gratitude, uh, but we're doing it in regards to gratitude as a game mechanic. So uh, gratitude or thankfulness, I just didn't feel like typing out thankfulness a million times because I like to use big words. So Ooh, we're talking about okay. gratitude. Uh, so this, this can be either like gratitude as expressed narratively or gratitude as expressed through like the game design itself. But we have done one of these before. Uh, and we did it last month and we did fear and yep. I was going to move on to actually was going to move on to grief next and talk a lot about rhyme and that. But uh, I figured gratitude was a better one because I was looking for something to do for Thanksgiving. Uh, and it's like we have we have done, I think, every aspect of Thanksgiving now. What? This would be the sixth, fifth or sixth time that we've fifth, done a Thanksgiving episode. Fifth. Yeah. yeah, there's not that much to draw out <laughs> we, we, we even did like football oh, games six one is the sixth one you're right we did sports yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's our sixth yep. one because we started in 2017 in september so yep. we hit the first one yep. on year zero mm-hmm. and this is yeah. year five so six cool all right well excuse me whoa let's uh talk then Speaking about of gratitude yeah right <laughs> <laughs> so what i like to do with these is is talk about talk about the actual emotion first uh and from a psychological perspective right from our, our understanding of it so when we talked about fear we talked about what were those universal fears i do think gratitude is a very common uh, emotion and probably everybody experiences gratitude at some point in their lives but I don't think gratitude is nearly as ubiquitous in our daily lives as fear. So, but yeah, so we'll, we'll start with the first question though, is uh, what is gratitude from a psychological perspective or from a, what would that be? Anthropological perspective. perspective? Sure. How does gratitude play a role in our daily lives? If gratitude plays a role in our daily lives. And instead of how do we, this time I just even said the question, do we tend to identify with gratitude in our entertainment or even respond well to it? And finally, I wanted to talk, it's also often, I find it's oftentimes helpful to talk about emotions and frame them in perspective of their opposites. So what emotion is the opposite of gratitude? So Ooh, interesting. The definition, I pulled this one from Cambridge, I think, because I liked it a little bit better than Webster's definition. Um, uh, and they say it is the feeling of appreciation towards someone or something that has been helpful or beneficial to you. Uh, so it is a feeling, though there are like a couple different types of gratitude, one of which is like a mood and one is like a, a perspective, like an outlook and an attitude towards that. You kind mm-hmm. of always are th- like y- you may not be feeling gratitude at the moment, but you have sort of a constant sort of state of gratitude running through your head. But we're yeah. talking 
primarily about the emotion because it almost always starts with the emotion before anybody becomes like maintains an attitude of thankfulness like they usually feel the feeling of gratitude first so yeah it's just someone's helped you or done something for you or something like oh i'm thankful for food or i'm thankful for video games right like something was yeah. beneficial to yeah, you Yeah, like how vague uh, that definition is like anything that has been mm-hmm. helpful or beneficial to you a red light R- right it's more like, like it's it's not even so much like the thankful for the laws that keep people driving in the correct exactly way. but that's like, the point is that the the feeling can be it doesn't really matter the object of your gratitude the feeling can be provoked by anything it's that there's a very specific feeling that arises when you like recognize that something has that that, like that you've been helped or that you have benefited right Mm -hmm. so it's a very i do think it is it is a very foundational emotion because otherwise like tribes wouldn't be able to function right like we need it, it you know we evolved to be cooperative on some level we evolved to work with other humans yep and so the feeling of gratitude would have galvanized their tribes right because like Mm -hmm. uh on some level because yeah yeah, like sure (laughs) ah this is helping me i am now able to survive and i grew this thing for you and like and it came out of you know it definitely it's definitely a sort of response to fee like you know we talked about fear and how fear was kind of like the foundational emotion gratitude i think would be one that would come close after maybe not immediately but like gratitude would be like oh because now i feel the feeling of security because of something that you have done or provided for me and so then out of that security out of that feeling of security if i'm conscious enough to recognize that i've been helped then it's like the outward it's like the security is then like emanating outward towards oh you are the one who made me secure if it wasn't for you i would still be in fear right now so therefore uh, this new feeling that's replacing it is gratitude (laughs) yeah and it's interesting to have like different levels different thresholds of what it takes to get you to that point because if you normalize like i live in a community now that we are, by its structure and nature, constantly helping each other out all of the time, which like alcohol tolerance or like you come numb to it. So now it's not really the feeling of gratitude, that emotion you're talking about that is elicited by an act of care was off the charts when we first moved here. Like, whoa, these mm-hmm. people really look out for each other and this is awesome and I feel so thankful or so grateful for them. And then like as life happens and we constantly serve each other, and I imagine in church spaces too, like you're constantly serving each other. It kind of mm-hmm. numbs yourself down and like you, you don't get numb to the emotion, but I can definitely see where your your threshold of like, I feel so gracious right now is different for every individual. Mm-hmm. And there's yeah. people who live their lives who don't get served or help from anyone ever. And then the act of like a Starbucks drive through of someone buying their coffee sets them off. They're like, this is amazing. This is the most amazing feeling in the world. Oh my gosh. I'm so grateful that someone bought me a coffee. I didn't need like, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, it's wild that like, I guess with other human emotions, we're all this in that same boat where everyone has different thresholds is what I was trying to highlight of like mm-hmm. yeah, different yeah, life yeah. contexts, different situations, age and stage, et cetera. Really. It's a personal emotion. It's very mm-hmm. personal for every individual being. Anyway, yeah yeah that's, yeah no that's 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 exactly right cool well there is a couple other questions i had there was the question of whether or not like what so what role does it play in our daily lives like it like you know you had you kind of hit on some of that and and i kind of hit on some of that but the idea that like oh yeah we we are thankful for being thankful towards others improves our relationships with them also gets us outside of our own pers- like our own selfishnesses yeah. right mm-hmm It helps us sort of like there's there's studies upon studies that show that like that gratitude is like a huge stress reliever, right? Like when you're feeling anxious, I mean, it it really directly conflicts. I don't think it's the emotional opposite of fear in the same way that security is, but like fear and anxiety like have been demonstrably shown to be reduced uh, when you like experience gratitude, like when you when you uh, experience that and it's like. Uh, this actually this quote i'll go ahead and read this quote here from psychology today um psychologists find that over time feeling grateful boosts happiness and fosters both physical and psychological health even among those already struggling with mental health problems so like you could be like super mentally unwell and gratitude will still like a, a pattern of gratitude will actually have like a crazy health effect on you yeah studies show that practicing gratitude curbs the use of words expressing negative emotions so literally people's 
vocabulary will change no. uh, and uh, shifts inner attention away from such negative emotions as resentment, envy, minimizing the possibility of ruminating, which is the hallmark of depression. <laughs> so like ruminating, combats right? depression, yeah. combats uh, anxiety and, and literally will even like improve relationships, obviously because you won't be expressing negative emotions as often um, combats, mental illness, even if you are already mentally unwell, right? Like <laughs> so it's such a powerful emotion that and so yeah of course it plays a role in our daily lives and yet i mm-hmm. imagine there are so many people out there including myself some days that can can barely like do that like and can barely even bring themselves to like be grateful and experience that feeling but the question is do we do we tend to identify with gratitude in our entertainment so like if we encounter a show that's like or, or a book that's trying to like teach us thankfulness I, I find in my personal life, I think it ends up being kind of cheesy. Like, I, I don't think we really identify with it in the same way that we do with other emotions like anger and fear. You will you know, will respond well to it. But like whenever a character is like, oh, man, I just wish I could be more thankful right now. I think that's always Yawn. tends to me. Right. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. you're like, oh, stop getting so preachy and cheesy. Right. It's And I think it's partially because it's hard to empathize. Like gratitude is an emotion that you have to experience due to a circumstance, like due to a direct circumstance that is actually impacting you. Otherwise seeing someone else's gratefulness for something they've received that doesn't really affect you at all. It's really hard to like experience that, like empathize to resonate with that. It's like, it's a, it's a note that just doesn't have a lot of harmonies to go with it. Right. That exact thing is easy to convey in like blogs or articles about human experiences. I feel like the emotion of gratitude can hit and like you can empathize, right? But when it does come to storytelling or entertainment mediums, it's so much harder to like get a character for some reason. I don't know what it is. If it's like the personal nature of a blog or someone's life experience. I know when you throw it out to like a third party, it's weird. I don't know if I'm even articulating this correctly, but you're right. There's just like boredom or like, immediate tune tune out to like so-and-so is feeling grateful and it's extremely difficult to and it goes back to what i was saying earlier where it's very personal and like you said the context of your own life the emotion Mm -hmm. of gratefulness is almost always elicited out of you in your own specific unique situation and so to convey it in an entertainment medium out to the world for others to have that same reaction is going to be very difficult and you have to make it personal to them in that moment it's very Mm -hmm. very hard i imagine as a writer or a storyteller or a content creator to like do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think that's, that's correct. So cool. Well, oh, that you know, a good example is Willy Wonka and the chocolate factory. There's yeah, some grateful yeah, yeah. in there. That's actually good. That's not boring. I think and, that and that's yep. right. Because it's not, it's not necessarily beating you over the head. It's just sort of like showing you, it's like demonstrating by, by conveying the emotional opposite of yeah. gratitude which is my answer for the emotional opposite of gratitude is entitlement yep so gratitude if gratitude is i am feeling a positive feeling as a result of something that someone else did for me then entitlement says is sort of this negative emotion th- that and i call it a negative emotion because actually entitlement sometimes feels really good but it almost always has negative effects and consequences. <laughs> like almost always. Entitlement is like, I don't like I, I don't this. have this thing. I right. I this thing I don't have, I deserve it. Yep. And I'm yeah, it's like I'm going to express that I deserve this. It's like it still has to do with your relations to others. But it's like I'm going to take that thing. It's a little bit slightly different than greed, because greed is like, I'm just going to take this because I'm obsessed. I'm gonna keep it from you so that I can have it because it makes me feel good. But entitlement is sort of like the stepping stone to greed. It's like, before you have it, I feel entitled to it. I feel like it should be mine. Like so jealousy or coveting and nuanced, almost a little bit like it's, it's yeah. definitely, it's like a weird middle ground between greed and envy. Cause envy is that other one. Yep. That's like, I want this that I don't have. Yeah. And greed is I have this and I, did, and I won't I share, share it. it. Yeah. And then entitlement is that weird middle ground where it's like, I feel like I should have that, right? It's that it's like the it, it steps from because envy, you might be able to say, Man, I really want that and I am obsessed with it, but like I know I don't deserve it. Entitlement is when you convince yourself I have I do deserve it. And yeah. it just stands at that. I feel like it stands at that nice little pole of gratitude. Um, and and I feel like it's a fair one to say is the emotional opposite because 
when you are like the effects of entitlement are almost always the opposite of the effects of greed or sorry, gratitude. Great. Cause like gratitude, you're like, I'm, I, I feel closer to you. I feel like, you know, I, 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 yeah, I genuinely want you to succeed and be well because you've done this for me. Whereas entitlement's like, I don't care what happens to you at all. I want, I this, want thing. this thing. And that yeah. is what Willy Wonka does so well because it conveys it's like I'm not they're not gonna preach to you about being grateful. They're just gonna show you what happens when you're not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. Yep. And then they make it fun and lighthearted yeah. at the same time. So and then you can like um, you can wrap one. up humility. Like the mo- like being mm-hmm. humble is also kind of wrapped up in being gracious. You have they're, to they're be great. You're right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Entitlement mm-hmm. is also the opposite of humility. Like mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Because yep. you could have like that's the difference between envy. Envy is like I don't have the thing, or greed, you do have it. But the the entitlement aspect that the light shines a little bit differently because you could like I could have won that marathon and I could still be an absolutely entitled individual with that victory and say like right it, just a non sportsman like mentality of winners like that's entitlement yep. and they yep. they have it so it's kind of greedy like and they don't want to share it yeah they're all it's, I mean yeah. all the like emotions are all tied to, I mean, right they're all tied yep. together and yeah, they're they all. Are. So, yeah, I, I think I've, they're all tied together. So it's like you're bound to bounce because we're humans, right? And, and our emotions don't exist in a vacuum because we don't exist in vacuums. So it's like chicken and egg. I do think that there are some that like start, right? Like we fear and then like love or connection, whatever you want to call it. Both of those are kind of like foundational ones that will sort of the others will spin off of. But yeah, like they all intertwine. So someone who is entitled is undoubtedly going to be arrogant proud greedy envious but also entitled <laughs> yep. Yep. so yeah cool but it's, how does that relate to that, video like, games oh go ahead yeah 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 right right let's then talk about video games that's good yeah let's move on to video games <laughs> 40 minutes Just into about our 40 minutes. Emotion always, podcast. 40. It's like, always 40 i always feel like we're yeah. like 40 minutes in <laughs> cool how do video games utilize gratitude from a design perspective or and or from a narrative perspective yeah, what are what are what not necessarily what are games, but like what are designs? Now, granted, we'll combine it, I guess, then with the next question is because your your two examples and pretty much all of mine are also like game examples. So yeah. we'll just say what are examples of, of it's you know, a hard what would you call question to answer the best games about gratitude. Well, yeah. well I it's think a hard a question to answer without question. an example, which is why I threw <laughs> yeah, the examples yeah, yeah. here. So yeah, yeah. yeah, we're gonna combine the two. How do you how do games utilize gratitude from a design perspective, but also what are the best games about gratitude? Yeah, I'm answering both at the same time. Uh, I'm gonna highlight Journey first because it came out first. Mm-hmm. Uh, and mm-hmm. the reason yeah. how this game what it does to highlight gratitude is that it's it's online and connected to other people but you don't really know that going into it. Like you're not exactly. lobbying up with someone. You're not exactly. grouping with anyone. You're exploring this, this world. This is such a nice NPC. I'm so glad I have this NPC. But again, right? you still like, I'm entitled. You can still be like, I'm entitled to this NPC. It must help me. Only to and find out it that it was an actual person. It's like, oh my goodness. And they don't always help you, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So like with an NPC, you have an expectation of like this flat computer controlled thing. It's not an mm-hmm. actual character or a person. So it's going to help you. But then in Journey, because they're not, NPCs, but you don't know that some behave differently than others, and you may or may not receive help from these mm. other characters in the game. And then at the end, when you finish the game, spoiler alerts, it is online connected, and they were other people, and you can see their PSN profile names listed uh, who they were. And what's awesome about that is it, f- it completely obfuscates race, gender, age, sex etc like it doesn't nothing matters because all you've seen is an avatar of an individual there's no mic communications there's no there's no text in any language except for these noises and like pulses that you make at each other with like a little visual of a rune that is unique to the game and world of journey so like everything is normalized and you have no clue who you're interacting with how wonderful is that to like Mm -hmm. elicit gratitude because the plot of the game is like the main character going through some serious stuff and like dealing with things and being oppressed by the environment and having to struggle and dig deep and like push hard to get to the end. And you're getting help from strangers that you have no clue and completely removes any yearning for entitlement or like there's no grounds for those. It's awesome. So it really highlights how a mechanic can elicit gratitude and even deal with it in the game itself. And the main character of the game and, and leaning on the help of others and being gracious when you get it, because it's not always there. 
Uh, and Death Stranding is the next example for a more modern take. If you haven't played Death Stranding, I highly recommend it. Hideo Kojima from his Hideo Kojima Productions. You can get it on PC and PlayStation. But a trek across the country establishing connections after a post-apocalyptic cataclysmic event that has left everyone in isolation. This game came out before the pandemic. So when the pandemic hit, it was real. And it's also eliciting gratitude because you can leave uh, ladders to help others climb up mountains or cross rivers. And like you can leave roads for others to drive on. You can leave zip lines for others to use. And it, because it's an online connected game, but not in the same way that you would party up with someone or like group up and play together co-op. It's like an asynchronous online game where you would rely on others. Uh, also, you can like give thumbs up to signs that you post and warnings to each other. And Elden Ring and I guess other From Software games also have that kind of, you can share a message with others. And that elicits like a gratitude because those games are dark and dreary and lonely and oppressive to your emotions and like sad and dark. And so like Dead. getting that little glimpse of, dark. oh, someone else is struggling with me. Like mm -hmm. that's yep. gracious. That's gratitude. And it's it's not in necessarily the plot, the narrative, or like the character is right. not experiencing gratitude, but it's eliciting that emotion out of the player. It tied to the mechanics of the game, which is awesome. And very few games do this. And that's, there you mm -hmm. go. Those are the best. Yeah, no, I, I think that you're right. I, um, I, I'm going to highlight the, the gratitude systems. I think they've started implementing in uh, multiplayer. A lot of multiplayer games will have the sort of, um, accolades or, or coo it's not called kudos but it's like a kudos system right where yep. you literally uh and and i think they uh hopefully they did a lot of research almost seems like they took way too long to do the research but they're trying to figure out how to combat toxicity in all these games right <laughs> toxicity right, of course yeah. being rooted in the emotion of of entitlement uh and so like they finally figured out like oh yeah let's inject gratitude let's like let's for lack of a better term force players to be gracious towards one another, like literally point out the ways that they're great. Right. Yeah. Incentivizing <laughs> gratitude. Exactly. So like, I, you know, the example that comes to mind, I think Halo has Halo Infinite has it, but I know Overwatch has it where mm -hmm. it'll just like at the end of the game, you can sit there and be like, I'm going to give these awards like this. You were a great leader or you were a skilled player, like you were awesome or, or, you know, thanks for being like a team player, like good team player or whatever that 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 you can do that and that's a like a gratitude system so it again similarly not like a narrative thing i find because again i find that gratitude narratives can be unlike fear narratives gratitude narratives can be so like uh, <laughs> right like because it's hard <laughs> to empathize with that yeah. however what is really good is when you like when you can what games can do that i think few other mediums can do with gratitude is actually like make it so that like hey you're going to probably experience gratitude especially if you're playing a multiplayer game so like let's actually make that a central part of let's highlight how that. the let's like accentuate works. exactly that. yeah yep 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 exactly yep. so all right. Well, that leads us to our next question, which. Oh, so uh, did we hit a bunch of games? We talked about Death Stranding, Journey. Yeah, yeah. I brought like, up from it's, software it's surprising titles. You did. Yeah. And and I and multiplayer games, I think now do this a lot. I don't know all of them that do, but I would imagine it's pretty mainstream now because it's just it's it is a decent way to combat. It's not going to be like a wholehearted way of combating toxicity, but it's a start for a lot mm -hmm. of uh, a lot of games. So. Cool. Well, uh, what do you think that games could do more? What do you think that game designers could do more to utilize that feeling of gra gratu grat yeah. I almost said gratuitousness or like Whoa. gratuity or whatever. Like none Ooh. of those actually. Well, I guess gratuity technically is is uh, based it's on like the word tipping, gratitude. right? Uh, exactly. Paying yeah, someone right? for a tip. Could game? What could games do more to to utilize this? Uh, and and how could they do it? Or like, what would it be like? Oh, don't don't actually do this. It's a pitfall, right? Like it may seem like a good idea, but it's not a good idea. So like, I'll have a great user example. Yeah. Tipping, tipping would be a terrible yeah. thing. To <laughs> be a terrible, right, exactly. so. Yeah, it's exactly it. Here's a block of DLC, and if you tip the developers, you get a chunk of it. That's a terrible idea. Yeah, That's yeah. a no, horrible monetization that. strategy. Do Don't ever do that. <laughs> like, here you go, Santa Monica. I'm going to give you $5 so that I can unlock part of the next mission in God of War Ragnarok. Like, no, that's not. No, we're not doing that. No. Nope. So how, how can... <laughs> yeah, I don't... This is a tough question to answer because I really want to see... Now that video games are really becoming more mainstream and they're becoming these academic level pieces of literature that you can you can go into and like dissect character arcs and growth and plot and setting and all of these things like 
I want to see the gratitude emotion front and center in a way that doesn't feel cheesy. It can't be. So I, I don't know what that looks like because it's very rare to ever get that. But I want to see that level of, and I brought up Horizon Zero Dawn or Horizon Forbidden West at the beginning because there is a level of graciousness that's tied into that plot as like Aloy is helping out different tribes and trying to get other tribes to think differently in a way that's like helpful as they're struggling with something or like they have a, a one, a flat line way of a single painted view of an individual or of a tribe. And like Aloy comes in and actually like exposes the humanity behind it. And they kind of have an open mind and like move on. A lot of the side quests in that game deal with that, which is awesome. The side quests in that game are amazing. And I wish the platinum trophy actually forced you to do all of them because I skipped so many just to get the platinum and moved on. So what could we utilize gratitude more effectively? Like I just do like that like better, more in-depth storytelling and and as character models get better and like emotions conveying facial animations and like technology gets better to be able to to do the, like I'm just blown, not really a spoiler because it's at the beginning of the game, but when there's Odin and Thor talking to Kratos and Atreus or Atreus in God of War, that cabin scene was just so tense and it brought the player right Mm -hmm. in and it was just an awesome, amazing overlap of voice acting and detailed animations of the character models and conveying emotion through facial expressions in a way that is now okay. We can do that. We have a technology to do. We haven't done that before in video games. And so I think we can get to that level of moving the character through a necessary to be gracious way and highlight it in such a way that's not campy or cheesy. That's what Mm -hmm. I want to see. I want to see that happen. It's going to take a smart storyteller to do it. Yeah, yeah. No, I definitely, what you want is Willy Wonka, the the video game is what you're describing, right? (laughs) If if it takes highlight all the negative aspects of not being gracious in order to do that, then sure. Yeah, that'd be good. That's good. I think a really yeah, I think it's just cool. so I think it's so common for like because game game games rely often on like the fantasy of of your character being the hero, right? And that that power like the the power fantasy of like getting more powerful. There's it's it, the, the NPCs, the characters are always thankful for you, right? Like they say, "Oh, thank you so much," right? So you know the the rare games that do make you feel like just a piece of garbage right like <laughs> like from software games i think yeah. that utilizing that is is good because it helps you kind of realize you know like you said humility is a big part of it right if you're if you're you know um if you're just a, a duke nukem ba never phased right like like even if you're even as if as the player you're able to sort of separate your psyche from duke nukem's i'm not duke nukem right but still, there's that like that feeds into that power fantasy of like, yes, like, oh, thank God I'm here. Right. Yep. <laughs> uh, as yeah. opposed to like, uh, I think I'm going to lose and die a lot. Right. I don't feel very strong or powerful at all. I think that's that that forces some humility on you. And then therefore, when you like get something, oh, my goodness, I found the even like when you experience gratitude in the game to fi- like finding something right. Like, oh, I found this thing and it's going to help my help me so much. Right. It's going to be so helpful. Uh, that then yeah that that's that's uh, those are the kinds of things and so I think that games I think that uh, yeah games that focus more on your like your connections and I, I think of you know again tying things for us to my favorite hobby right now uh, next to video games D and D like mm-hmm. you know in D and D there's a there's a person a thinking human being in in the dungeon master seat who is responsible for the world and and they can they can enforce consequences right whereas games are have to rely on like pre programmed things but that's not the end of the world right like the the bottom line is like focusing on consequences right creating consequences for for choices right we talk so much about like oh man this Mm. game had so many choices so much customization but we don't often talk about the other side of choices which should be consequences right sometimes consequences are what you want sometimes consequences are good or the thing you want to happen but sometimes consequences aren't the thing you don't want to happen or the thing you couldn't foresee happening so i think games creating more interesting consequences right and again as long as you know going into the game right as long as you're not you know again if like with from software games you're like i know it's going to be hard right that's the same thing there should be a genre of games where there are consequences for the choices you make and so therefore when there are consequences, I think that 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 creates an environment in which gratitude can thrive, right? Because then you can you can learn to actually be grateful when things do work out the way you intend them to, or or when you're able to accomplish your goals in the game despite the consequences of your choices. I think that's that's always a good a good sort of fertile ground for that. Could have the backfire effect of just making people ticked off and frustrated, but whatever. Yeah. 
those are those are ex- interesting experiences as well. So, uh, Bioware, cool. are you listening? Like that's dialogue choices. Come on, <laughs> CD Projekt Red uh-huh. in the next Witcher, Witcher Four, or whatever, Cyberpunk Two, or whatever happens. Like totally. Uh, what ripe. I want is like, but what I want, I think, is because like with Bioware games, it only takes a, a couple of like months for the players to figure out what if if that what's the ideal route to make sure everybody survives, right? Like. I, number one, I want there to be a game where there is no ideal route. Like someone's guaranteed to die, yeah. at least one person or or more, right? No matter mm-hmm. what choices you make, or a system where it's random, not not random, but like where it's like at the beginning of the game, it's like run through an algorithm where the choices and the consequences shift around, so you never know exactly what. Ooh, so the same your choices- dialogue choices result in different might have different effects yeah Yeah, exactly so instead of pressing a lot of like i look at the persona 5 or persona 4 walkthroughs where it's like answer one two three you know whichever choices to get these rewards and move on but it's like you you can't do that that would be impossible because if i answer one two three and you answer one two three we have entirely different outcomes that would be Mm -hmm. awesome yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a whole other right, right. level and of like, I feel like RNG based stuff. You wouldn't even need like algorithms, though. You just need, sorry, you wouldn't need AI. You just need like a, a pretty effective algorithm. Yeah, that would be cool. <clears throat> and because because you can make some of the choices generic enough where they could have multiple. In fact, almost all yeah. choices could have multiple outcomes. That's what you do when you make a choice is yep. you weigh the outcomes. But if you can just look up a guide and know the outcomes. So therefore, it shouldn't be hard to be like, oh, this choice has multiple outcomes. So at the beginning of the game, when you press start, it throws all the choices through an algorithm and randomizes like the assigned outcomes. So it's like yeah. there's three possible outcomes, but those outcomes then have different choice, branching choices and branching outcomes. So you know, it would be it, yeah. what like what was that game? Uh, Butterfly Effect game. Detroit Become Human. Well, but Detroit or, or any of those from that studio it, like that. That's kind of what that, that should yeah. have been. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, but who knows? Maybe that is impossible to program. I and I, I I'm not a programmer, so I I have no idea. <laughs> but, great. Well, that leads to our last so question. Hard. A nice yeah. nice tight episode here, and that is uh, how can video games help us? How can video games help us to experience and understand gratitude, and then or experience or understand gratitude, and facilitate, or therefore facilitate our growth as people? So again, this was sort of like this question. It's interesting doing a really positive emotion after doing the last time's negative mm, emotion negative like ones. yeah last time it was like how can it help us confront our fears and 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 th- therefore grow past them this is like how can we actually like like we want to experience gratitude so like we talked about the ways that it can help us experience gratitude but how can that experience then help us understand gratitude and facilitate our growth as people yeah this is like we've touched on this the entire episode in our discussions but normalizing and socializing different mm-hmm. aspects of humanity and different just different perspectives and like having different things shown at us and realizing that there's more than one way to look at a certain specific, like we get so caught up in our tribalism and our own path and who who we are and where we come from and what our life experience is that we can very quickly either like alienate or demonize or minimize someone else's experience. That's just as valid as yours, but Uh video games can help just like movies and books and TV shows can all help like, socialize and normalize new ways of thinking and i i love like a, a lot everyone attacks like wokeness or whatever but it's everyone else's perspectives getting out into the open and being normalized and socialized and now we have different perspectives of different people's life experiences and there's wrong ways to convey that of course and there's good ways to convey that and i feel like video games is just a great way to add a different type of storytelling medium to our already ripe storytells stories that we consume that um we'd be able to like learn from that. And so I figured this is what you know, I talked about it with horizon many times already. God of war is touching on a new one that I won't get into. Cause I don't want to spoil too much, but understanding and experiencing gratitude facilitate growth as individuals. And then you go into what you were talking about earlier with the, uh, accolades kind of the online gaming systems where it's like, you get randomly assigned a group on halo. You worked well together and you want to like show gratitude towards another player there's a way to do that and like they get an mm-hmm. in-game reward for it or like to monetize incentivize not mon- not monetize do not monetize to incentivize mm-hmm. like showing positive emotions to others to combat toxicity that's awesome like we need more of that and i think video games yeah. can do it totally especially they're more connected you're experiencing more 
in playing online with strangers than you would ever ex- like imagine the experience you would get in an Overwatch 2 group together working together with a stranger what other aspect of anyone's life would you ever do that exact same thing uh-huh. because if you have coworkers they're not really strangers cuz you see them every day you get to know them right if you see right. and bump into somebody at a grocery store they're not going to like work alongside you to overcome a common goal like if you randomly bump into someone on the subway or on a train or on a plane they're not going to like work to unless there's a crisis situation you don't like it's so unique to video games and the online play that we have to like connect to others in a way that you requires collaboration strategic planning and execution to like win it's so unique to games and if we can just leverage that to like make people better and appreciate everyone else instead of the default being toxicity. I'm not surprised that it is, but that's where we're at. <laughs> like, yeah, that's, that's video game. That's the magic right there. That's, that's video games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's go. Cool. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Yeah, no, I mean, that's uh, I think that, that you hit on pretty much like the main things I was going to hit on, which is like, I think that games, I think that games, because it's a mechanic, because it's interactive, right? Because you, like, it's one thing to watch characters, like, be thankful that, you know, oh, thank you, Gandalf, for showing up at the last second and saving, uh, saving the day. Yay, I'll return the favor in the next movie, right? Like, right. <laughs> it's one yeah. thing to, like, have to see the characters experience gratitude towards one another. And that can be beneficial if, if well-written and not cheesy. But it, it's a whole other thing to then, like, oh, yeah, this, like, I was actually having a hard time or I was actually worried about this. And then... Now I'm grateful. Now I'm feeling grateful. So uh, helping us understand just that effect that like the these feelings are tied together and a little bit of gratitude can actually wipe out a lot of anxiety. Mm-hmm. So like just injecting that into, you know, if you're a player, I would suggest if you're a player right now and you don't take advantage of the like gratitude systems built into multiplayer games, like do it <laughs> right. Like like just just do, do, start you doing it right. Like not only do they give you rewards for it, but it. It, it does like it does feel good i think sometimes to like hey thanks that was like recognize someone for the way that you're thankful for them so and hey now's the time right because it's thanksgiving week so thanksgiving, you yeah, should have time off and you already should be thinking about thankfulness so all right well that is our episode on gratitude and our second press f for feelings so if you like this series let us know that like hey do more emotions because that's fun if you don't like the series then tell us that too because we want to hear it that's feedback that's important that helps us improve our show so we want to hear all those thoughts and more and all your thoughts on gratitude and the content of our episode as well so termite where can they share their thoughts if i have them you can go find all of the, the things we talked about tonight tiktok discord twitch all those social media sites at 80bitpodsmash.com, 80bitpodsmash.com. Penguin will post the DLC from our episodes on TikTok, so you can respond there. We will be live streaming, watch along the Game Awards, and reacting to all of the things, and hanging out with y'all in chat on twitch.tv slash 80bitpodsmash, December 8th, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And our videos, our podcast goes in video format to YouTube, if you find us there. And you can respond, chat with us, talk with us on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and our Discord server, uh, and interact with us in a more like immediate fashion. And all of the links to those things, 80bitpodsmash.com. If you're wondering what we're talking about, we're a podcast, what what is our show, what do we do? Every single Monday at midnight, we drop a new episode of some topic that and how it relates to video games. And you can find links to Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, etc. All of our podcast platforms over at 80bitpodsmash.com. One website has everything. We're all there, except that I continue to forget to put the TikTok link in the website so it's tiktok.com slash 80 bit pod smash i guess or have at 80 bit i don't know how tiktok works because i'm an old man me so too. yeah there's like whatever 80 bit pod smash in tiktok you'll find us yeah, Penguin yeah, and Termite. yeah we're there yeah cool all right well next week i do have finally i did i did the, the work i was supposed to do and came up with a list Next week will be just after Thanksgiving, and we'll be talking about the rise, well, I call it the rise of Double A Studios, but the topic in general is about the idea of, like, indie studios being bought by AAA publishers, and, like, do they count as indie anymore when they say, like, what, how do, like, we talked about independent developers before as a topic and how important they are. But now we have this weird space where like indie games can be wildly become wildly successful, and then when they start growing, at what point are they 
no longer considered indie. And in general, that's gone hand in hand with this idea of double A studios as well, um, which have always been around technically, but you know, they, they, the two kind of meet in a weird spot. So we're going to talk about all of that and that will be next week. So tune in. All right. With that, can't wait to talk about those things. We will see you next week. Do we?